Hi guys, we see some text on, let's see, let's there, okay, that's a good one, on um, Telegram, and one of the things that I love is Minstick. So Minstick is this little device that we have, USB image writer, and it's coming from Linux Mint, right? So 10 years ago, I started using it, and I'm still using it on Arch. Linux. So that's way of that's way that's the way I install things and not with Fedtoy or anything else. That's me burning a USB, put in ISO, burn, put in USB, burn, done. Right. Calamaris is a Swiss army knife to install all kinds of Linux distributions. And the code is always improving. Now, the code is not from us, eh? Calamaris, you have to know that, it's github.com slash calamaris slash calamaris. If there are issues, you can report them there. You can actually help as well with the other guys from Manjaro and OS, KOS, etc. And the thing is, there is somebody saying, I have a problem or an issue. And what I do, in those hundred installations prior to the release of Arco Net, Arco Pro, and Arco Plasma, is never, ever, go for a manual installation, right? I don't do this. Since my rule is one operating system per SSD, per computer actually for me, right? But okay, I understand. But per SSD. This is what I choose, one of those and one of those, and let Calamaris do the magic. When you start doing manual partitions, and often the reason is that they have more than one operating system on the hardware, in this case in VirtualBox, then it's up to you to make and set everything right. And maybe, I don't know, right? Maybe Calamaris is just not ready for that. That's a tool provided for free from the guys. But what it mostly needs is a lot of knowledge. So if we go for a manual partitioning, I'm sure, I really am sure that if you go to Control Alt G, for example, which is Chromium, and you go to arconlex.com, there is this button that says Calamaris. I've made a few videos about Calamaris. All right, all kinds of things, even dual boot, install Windows 11 and all that, right? And um, how do they call this manual partition? Manual partitioning, let's see if we can find the word manual. Manual encrypted installation. Manual installation to have butter of S. And here we are, right? So, yes, I seem to have made already a few videos about the tool, Calamars. So let's go for a manual partition. You see that he creates something very small, free, unknown, one megabyte. And then it starts off with a FAT32. Okay, and we can have a look at it. So, okay, boot, flags, cancel and edit no boot now i'm gonna switch so as you can see it was butter S previously now there are guys like one two three four five six seven eight nine lines of all kind of different partitions and different hard disks like five six hard disks every hard disk has three partitions so that means 18 linux distribution right and windows Sorry, that's not what it's intended for, right? If it works, great. If it's not working, clean everything up. That means delete this partition, delete that partition, and everything is free of space. I would do this one as well. Old computers, new computers, 80, 90% chance that you'll need this one, right? If it's a new computer, certainly. And then it's really clean because now we've written a new partition table. 
click on this one and off we go. So this is more complex. We need an EFI. EFI, we saw that was FAT32. We saw that the boot flag needs to be on. We saw that boot EFI was the mounting point. And just to give it a name, I'm gonna type EFI because I remember some text in Calamaris saying we need a name. Okay. And then we have everything. Bad job, right? Delete. Go again. What did we forget? We forgot to set the size. So two is good. These days we have two gigabytes. We can switch between Grub, System Deboot, and also Refind. Depending on the tools you have, they sometimes write their kernels completely inside the boot FI, which of course is filled up quite quickly if you have only 300. So we're gonna go for a bigger one and then we can play all we want and test out other applications because there are a few out there on the AOR. So boot for FAT32, boot EFI, two gigabyte, partition table type is GPT, FAT32 and the labeling. And that's it. Okay. The rest is just for fun. I'm not gonna make anything more complex like a home partition or an opt or a server, USR and var, whatever. No, just that one is good enough. Monk point for all the rest. Encryption, never bother with encryption. And maybe you can call this home or something or root, I don't know what you should call it. I don't even know if it needs a name. I don't think it needs a name. I'm gonna call it root, okay. So that's what's possible if you have, of course, big um, partition like I, big uh, hard disk SSD, like two terabytes, four terabytes. Maybe you can say, okay, I'm gonna create something called data. That's an option. But again, wouldn't bother with it. I mean, put everything on, on one big partition, four gigabyte then for the root and two gigabyte of the other guy. And then we go for next. And we've chosen X4, we check again. So we move from this one to that one, that's basically the same thing. And ButterFS is out and X4 is back in. And then we say install. This would be, would be a manual installation. Um, we can see later on where our little words boot in EFI come up. If we can see them somewhere. But now everything is just being, well, actually already unpacked. So the slices, the partitioning has been created already in the beginning. Somewhere in here, it says, okay, let's divide our pizza into pieces, small piece, fat 32, a big piece for X4, and that's it. It's in here somewhere, this SDA, SDA1, voila, one, two is here. And off it goes, all technical stuff. All right, let's wait till the installation is finished. Let's uh, restart and then analyze, right? What is the result of our actions? And then write them down. Remember what you did. How do we do this? There are two applications, well, three actually, there's Duff. Quick and easy, so you know that we have root, X4, 26% is used of it, 0% is used for boot EFI. And this one you can ignore, that's my setup of VirtualBox. Second is Gparted. So we've got ourselves a boot EFI, so a, a partition that's mounted in a folder a device as the one that's mounted in here. That's the label that we did not type. I don't think we typed this one. I think we typed something with EFI small letters. And this one is mine. There is something new 
not boot but ESP as well so that's interesting to remember and then X for the root another tool to be installed is the partition manager from Plasma let's first get the database in so it knows what to download where partition manager as you see it's a plasma thing right which means a lot of dependencies a lot of case stuff kpm core is in here so you decide whether you install it or not this is an educational video you can type partition manager here but of course normally people just go ahead and type it in here kde partition manager and then off we go different tool to say the same thing right just wanted to see is the efi small so efi is capital letters here as well fat 32 x4 root all right so that's um the result of our settings and of course yeah it's um, up to you to make all these decisions what you do with your system again i repeat we prefer not that people are not banging on doors because they're dual booting triple booting and quadruple booting and you know right just one thing one operating system per ssd which makes your life our life easier all right that's it for me cheers